Next up, we have Alex McAlvey, the assistant curator for the Center for Plants, People, and Culture at the New York Botanical Garden. Round of applause. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, I am going to present today on a PTFI project funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, it's focused on grain mixtures for dietary diversity, climate resilience, and soil regeneration. So we are globally facing a number of challenges, as we've been talking about, one being hidden hunger or uh, micronutrient deficiency around the world. Climate change is threatening our ability to grow crops. And at the same time, we need to grow more food and grow it more sustainably. So uh, historically, and to some degree in some parts of the world today, uh, people have leveraged crop diversity to enhance their uh, ability to withstand uh, new pests, new diseases, uh, climate challenges, such as extreme weather events, and that e diversity extends to people's plates. Uh, many local communities around the world, smallholder farmers, uh, indigenous people, have for thousands of years of observation and experimentation developed strategies to grow crops together. They've figured out kind of like companion planting, which you might be familiar with, which ones grow with which ones and how they help each other. Oops, sorry. It's a little lag on here. Oh no. Okay. Sorry. And particularly in grain fields, I'm talking about small cereals especially they used to look a lot more like meadows than monocultures. So you would have multiple species. For example, this is an Ethiopian farmer who's harvested two different varieties of barley, two different varieties of wheat from a single field. And that, sorry, this, okay. Uh, that used to be widespread throughout uh, Europe, Asia, and Africa. You can see here, uh, wheat and barley, multiple species of wheat, wheat and rye, but in the last 50 years or so, this has greatly declined for all the reasons that Dan was talking about. Mechanization, markets favoring uniformity, wanting the Wonder Bread flour for the global market. Uh, and so we started this project, the Traditional Grain Mixtures Project, to understand and support these traditional strategies in order to improve dietary diversity, yield stability, and soil regeneration. We're focused here in the Ethiopian highlands, doing a combination of nutritional analyses, farmer interviews, and agricultural experiments on these four different types of mixtures. There are many more in this area. One of the traditional mixtures is wheat and barley, as we've mentioned, but also fava beans and peas, uh, varietal mixtures of different uh, indigenous crops, such as teff and sorghum. And in our hundreds of interviews, many, many farmers mentioned this same phenomenon. So this is with, with sorghum, for example. If we mix kolebo and gedalet sorghum varieties, it is good because if rain is scarce, kolebo will be successful. And if the rain is prolonged, gedalet will be successful. So the importance of mixing them is to get a good yield in different weather conditions. And we talked to some farmers who are growing seven or eight different sorghum varieties in their field, each with unique characteristics. We also found in our agricultural experiments that some of these mixtures, for example, wheat and barley, if you have a small amount of barley, you can get a greater yield uh, statistically significantly greater yield than monocropped barley and monocropped wheat of the same varieties. But we're very, very interested to find out how this transition from monocrops, from mixtures to monocrops, uh, has impacted nutrition. And so we're working with uh, some colleagues in the audience, Dr. Ndale Amare from the Ethiopian Public Health Institute, Dr. Ed Canelli from City University of New York, graduate student Tony Johnson. Uh, to understand this, because there's reason to believe that there's complementarity in the nutritional profile of some of the components in these mixtures. So if you have a complex mixture of wheats and barleys, maybe multiple species or even ver uh, and varieties of barley, uh, of, of wheat, sorry, you would expect some differences compared to the monoculture. Also, little is known about how the, the varieties might be complementary. So you can see this is a black barley, which likely contains high levels of anthocyanin, which is an antioxidant compound. That's not being grown in many places anymore because of these um, homogenous wheats that have come in. 
We're also looking at the impact of soil, so uptake of different uh, minerals, but also the impacts of the soil on the secondary metabolites or some of those interesting chemicals like antioxidant compounds. Uh, we're looking at how the actual act of mixing them together in the field impacts their, their chemistry and nutrition, as well as how their preparation through fermentation and other means impacts the nutrition and the availability of that, those uh, vitamins. Finally, we are extending this project. Um, it's had spin-offs in several different countries, uh, looking at, at traditional grain crop mixtures, understanding how we can uh, document them and also potentially revitalize them. So in conclusion, uh, there are a lot of lessons to be gained from looking to what smallholder farmers have been doing for thousands of years in order to safeguard their crops and also ensure dietary diversity potential to revitalize these practices in those areas um, and bring back those, those cultural traditions. Also, there's the ability to think beyond a single crop. We often think of breeding the, the super crop, but sometimes there's no one perfect crop for an environment, and the perfect crop for the environment uh, is becoming less and less possible as unpredictable swings are happening with weather, new pests are being introduced to new areas because of changing climate, etc. And finally, these mixtures are not incompatible with other strategies for food security, for uh, food diversity. So there's no reason that these mixtures couldn't be combined with precision agriculture, integration of livestock, biofortification, or conventional breeding. So thank you very much. Thank you. You can join us over here. Thank you so much. And I know I want a world where fields look more like meadows than monoculture. So thank you for emphasizing that.